TNT.
right, we have DJ, Alex Lomax, and Precious Chua. Questions? Hey, DJ, this is your really first big game at home. Yeah. How would describe your emotions and atmosphere going through the game and just competing in that type of atmosphere? I mean, from, um, from the tip off, you know, I was a little nervous, but you know, once I got in the game and scored my first book, you know, after that I was settling in. So, you know, it was a, it was a fun and love, I mean, fun, I mean, fun and live game, but you know, I'm just glad we came out and got the win. Oh, this question is for Alo, man. You're coming into your sophomore year, you just seem to be a lot more poised and been really a leader for this team, uh, really big down the stretch um, and, and winning this game. Just kind of talk about what your, your mindset was coming into this, this year and your play down the stretch today. Uh, you know, uh, at some point of the game, you know, we was kind of getting a little, a little hot, hot, wild. So, you know, I was just having to tell myself that we got to calm down, listen to coach, uh, run some sets. And uh, the ball was in my hand towards the end of the shot clock. And I was just, I just happened to make a couple good plays at the right time. And uh, the, I just was poised and just thinking about, you know, we got to calm down, get good shots, uh, make it a possession game for the, for the team. This one's for Alo as well. For you? Does this feel like your most complete game? Like when you think about your just your entire body of work so far, is this, is this going to be one you're going to remember? Yeah, uh, especially uh, on the college level. Uh, you know, this this is a big game. So the ones the big games are the ones that matter most. Uh, it, it shows who you are. So for me to come out and just do a good job of finding my teammates, uh, doing a better job of rebounding, uh, this is what I care about and defending well. So I just did a good job of that. So I feel like it was a complete game from that aspect of just defending, uh, getting my teammates involved and going back and rebound like coach has been asking me to do. This question is for Precious. Uh, what was the game plan going in? It seemed like y'all stuck pretty much to like every aspect of yeah, it this um, time. Especially coming from the, the game before, um, we kind of just said we're going to stick to the game plan coming to this game. Like my teammate said, it's a big game, you know. And we just had to come out and play to um, play following the game plan that the coaches give to because it's a, a really good team, veteran team. They're really good, you know, SEC school. But And we knew if we went away from what we were supposed to do, it was going to be all right, the outcome would have been different. But that's why we all just locked in into what the game plan was coming to this game. Questions, DJ. Um, you talked about the first, your first basket. What about your, talk about your last one. The, the, the slam there at the end, and then Alex, for you, the free throws down the stretch, if you could just sort of talk about that. Um, my last point, you know, we said um, I had got a fast break, you know, the time was running down. I just wanted to end the game with a bang, you know, so that's what I did. Yeah, you know, free throws, they were big because the game was pretty close. Uh, that, the free throws was going to make or break the game for us. And uh, for me, uh, I kind of made mine towards the end of the game, and uh, those were those good, so, but we still got to get in there. We still got to get in the uh, in the gym and, and make sure everybody is making free throws down the stretch, so they won't even come down to that one two position game. This question for Precious and DJ: When a game is called like this, when you know they're making a lot of calls, how do you stay aggressive without and stay within the game plan and still be you know focused, knowing they call a lot of fouls? Uh, really, you just got um, you just got to. I mean, be aggressive, but you know, you got to be smart with it. Like, you can't just pick up little cheap fouls and be dumb with it. You know, you can be aggressive, but just, um, you just got to watch what you do. Um, pretty much, it just comes, you can't really just let the team go lay the ball up every time. You got to find the fine line between being aggressive and coming in foul. So, like DJ said, you just have to be smart about the plays. And, you know, and also on the other end, we have to put the team, you know, position where they can't follow us because we now you know how the Reds are calling the game then if they're calling on this side they're definitely going to call on the other side so we just have to play the same way they're attacking us on the defensive side yes this question is for Precious with so much going around the program uh, what has motivated you to step up your game with the absence of James um pretty much it's just James is a huge factor on this team um he's really huge I, I'm sure everyone everyone knows but like I said before it's just the rest of the team the rest of the team just have to step up and make up for James not being here and not being able to play um, like if you look across the statues today we have Ayla stepped up big time today Lance Isaiah stepped up real real good you know, you know towards the beginning of the game and just guys just kind of like picking up roles and Lester went down early today during the game so it was just Guys is realizing that if someone is absent, then you know have to you know pick up the role and just you know be good at it, and that's what happened today. This is for Alo. 
what was on the on the last foul? You been you were trying to foul her before the shot. Well, how how did that unfold? Penny told you to foul, and then you hit, yeah. <coughs> and then and can you address that too? Picking up with with James out, he seemed like he was involved in cheering and stuff. But but what's it like without him? Uh, the last play, there was a bonehead mistake on my end. Uh, I kind of messed up. I, I ran through, and I shouldn't have did that. And then I kind of fouled it. It could have been three free throws from him, uh, but luckily it wasn't. Uh, there was a mistake on my end. And uh, yeah, James, with James being now, you know, like I said the, the other day, he's been working hard, uh, been putting in work, uh, waiting to get back. Uh, he's just cheering us on, ruining ruin everybody on. And like Chris has said, you know, everybody got to step up. You know, James went out, and uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize Lester went out in the first half early, so a lot of other guys had to step up also because he's a big piece of our team too. So uh, we just had a lot of guys to step up today and uh, play more than one role and go all out for the team. Oh, for DJ, how much fun are you having out there? I'm always having fun. I, I love basketball, you know, so um, every time I get on the court, I try to go out there and play hard and just have fun out there and unite the crowd, so this is what I do. Igniting the crowd, so what, how, explain that adrenaline rush, that feeling you get when you slam slam dunk and then the crowd just uh, go crazy like that. Um, how would I put it? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know really, it's just, um, you know, when I dunk, you know, I'm used to the crowd getting wild, so, you know, it kind of, I kind of feed Obviously, off that. you love it too much, you're getting tech after you dunk. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, though. I had to. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he deserved it. <laughs> no, I didn't go. Two more. Uh, for DJ and Precious, uh, frustrated at having a 16-point lead and it getting so tight at the end, or see it maybe as a, a learning experience today? Um, I see it as a learning experience, you know, because we had um, we had a good lead, you know, we just started going in playing wild, so we just got to um, be better in protecting the lead, and because um, we could have easily blew, it, blew them out, but you know, at the end we got kind of wild, so we just got to learn to stay calm and keep our composure. Oh, this is kind of for all the guys whoever wants to answer it, man. Rebounding at, at times has been a problem for this team. You tied at, at 38 overall for. Uh, with Ole Miss today, but you out read about them 16 to 10 on the offensive glass. Got to talk about that emphasis today and how how big that was for you guys winning the game. Uh, the rebounding came up big. Uh, usually when we play big games uh, or just games, we've been getting our rebounding lately. But you know, guys came in today uh, and just packed the paint and just went all in the rebound. Uh, guards came in and rebound. You know, Precious, he was a beast on the boards tonight and rebound. Lance also had some key rebounds. Uh, the, re the rebound is the reason while we won the game. Uh, we got clutch rebounds and the one offensive rebound towards the end to get us an extra possession. Last question. Ayla, you talked yesterday about how the chemistry of this group was maybe coming together a little slower than you expected. Did it feel like today you guys came together in a way that maybe you hadn't before this season? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, the chemistry went up a lot today. You know, it was a big game and uh, guys played together. Uh, we didn't get as, as many as 20 assists as we wanted, but we still got the open shots that we wanted. But, you know, guys came, played together. Uh, we found each other a lot. And uh, most of our points came from creating. And uh, no ISO, not that many ISO. So most of our points came from somebody creating a shot for somebody else. And uh, we just, we got better today um, in learning each other offensively and defensively. All right, thank you. Thank you. Coach, will make an opening statement and take questions. Uh, first, just very proud of a young team uh, coming out against a veteran team and, and basically just kind of like growing up right before our eyes. Uh, I couldn't have been more proud of everything that happened tonight. We had our bumps and bruises, but for the most part, the reads that they made, the defense that we played, um, the, the, the big time plays in the beginning of the game, the middle of the game, and at the end of the game to be a young team, especially after Lester got hurt. Uh, and couldn't come back. The troops rallied and uh, and pulled a huge win out. Uh, Coach, it's becoming a theme with uh, Alo. It seems like every time he comes into the game, he kind of settles you guys down. He was really big for you down the stretch. Kind of talk about his play and made several plays down the road to help kind of kind of win this game. Yeah, Alo is uh, you know out of everybody. He knows my system. He understands me. He understands the flow. He's won a lot of ball games in his career. You know, he's won six state championships in seven years. So he he understands the game. He's a winner. He's already a tough guy. Um, and <clears throat> he knows that we have a very young team. So when he comes in the game, he knows he has to affect the game right away. And uh, whether that's fair to him or not, 
we need him to be on every single game with what he brings, and he brings the toughness every game. And I was proud of him. Uh, I was proud of him today. Halo said rebounding was the reason why you guys won the game today. Um, how much of it was that? How much of it was the hostile environment? I mean, the environment for for you guys and, and whatever the, else. Yeah, the fans were amazing. Obviously, you know, we did get 38 rebounds. We tied 38, 38. We gave up 16 offensive, but. Um, I think what he was meaning was the crucial rebounds at the time that we needed them. We just didn't make the free throws when we needed them. But um, we, he was talking about just battling, man. They really fought today. Every kid that was out on that floor fought their hearts out and, uh, and pulled out a big win. When you look at how Precious played today versus earlier in the season, are, are you more impressed by today's performance? Like, what did you make of him today versus? Well, this, this is who he is. You know, I think early on he wanted to, he wanted to score more, and he was kind of ignoring all the dirty work. And I had a long talk with him yesterday because I know who he can be and I know where he wants to go. And where he wants to go, he has to do the things like he did today. And he locked in and, and never took his eyes off of it from the beginning of the game until the end and showed who he really is to the country. Hey, Coach, other than your three-point shooting, do you think this is one of your most complete games uh, offensively and defensively as a team so far? I would say so because the kids are getting better because they're understanding the reads. We're showing it to them on film. Uh, we're showing them the mistakes. They're correcting them every game, every practice. They're more aware, and the decision making is much better um, on what we're doing. It's just they're learning, man. They're they're growing up every day, and that's what we want. We, we're not going to be the best team right now, but man, by March we want to be we want to be tough, very tough. Vinny, uh, considering Lester only played eight minutes, you just had a 16 point lead on a likely NCAA tournament team without two starters. How encouraging is that as you get ready to go through the stretch you're about to go through? Very encouraging. Uh, I think that's more, for, more so for the guys because it's very hard to win on this level. And to have a 16-point lead on a really well-coached team that has veteran guards and veteran players, I mean, that's, that's amazing for us. We will grow from this. We cannot go backwards from this point forward with our energy and our understanding of what we're trying to do. But it's huge for us not to have Lester and James in there and be able to do that. Any update on Lester? No update right now. I just know that Lester is a very tough kid, and for him not to come back into the game, that's not good. I don't know what the verdict is, but for him not to come back, it's, it's, there has to be something wrong with him. Alo said yesterday <clears throat> maybe the chemistry of the team hadn't come together as quickly as maybe some other guys expected. A game like this, what you saw out there, you said they were growing up in front of our eyes mm -hmm. out there. Like, did you feel like a, a connectivity that you hadn't seen before with just the group? <laughs> yeah, for sure, because the energy in the building was different for those kids. You know, that energy was different for Ole Miss because the fans and the rivalry, and they felt that. And them being more together today was was definitely uh, noticeable because they, they just wanted to win the game. They didn't care who shot the ball. They didn't care who – who did uh, anything offensively? They just tried to play their hearts out, hearts out defensively, and get the win. And that was today was the biggest game because I think they felt that energy. Any other questions for Coach? Uh, that coach was in here earlier talking about how important he thought it was to keep this series going. Are you? Do you feel the same way that as long as you're the coach, uh, you'll try to keep this uh, keep these series? Absolutely, going? absolutely. I think it's so important because of. You know, the, the, just the competition of it. You know, Ole Miss, Arkansas, um, Tennessee, those games are big. And even we played Vandy back in the day. We need to renew a lot of these um, rivalries and keep them going because it's siblings that half went to Ole Miss, half went to Memphis. It's just how it is. So I think that's just that's just great for the, uh, for the culture and for everything that has to do with that. Tyler Harris uh, came up with a couple of really big – Big three-point shots. I think he, his second one extended the lead to 14, something like that. So, so you know, how valuable is it when you're struggling from three to have a guy who can just knock, knock yeah. him down like that? Yeah, Tyler Harris was born for these moments. He's a guy that's made big shots his entire life. And I know there's one guy on that team that I know when we need a big shot and you call his number that he's capable of making it. And um, every time I put him out there, I know he's going to make something happen. You know, he's not perfect, no, but – he can make big shots, take big shots, and make big shots. And uh, those two big threes back to back were incredible. The, the, the Tyree three point attempt. You were you told your guys to foul yeah. before. Where how 
How nerve wracking was that for you? What did you? It was nerve wracking because where Alo went out of bounds was where he was supposed to foul. He ran past him, and then tried to foul late. Oh man, it's like I. <laughs> When he went out of bounds, I couldn't believe it because he didn't foul. But yeah, we called a timeout for the reason. But that's that's part of maturing and understanding. I'm, I'm sure that won't happen again. But I was nervous when he went past him. Thank you. Thank you. T N T.